Good day. This is Jim from Realtruth.net. Lesson 6. And this lesson is about Yahweh coming to Mount Sinai and coming to the Mount of Olives and about the two Yahwehs that are talked about in the uh, scripture and it's the reason for this particular lesson is that folks don't understand I've seen different people talking about different uh, ideas on this and I don't agree with any of them so I'm going to present what the Bible says and uh, explain uh, what the two Yahweh's are when in fact <clears throat> they are the same uh, and and we will show that to start this study uh, there's a <clears throat> few fundamental facts from the word of Yahweh that we must always keep in mind now we cannot and must not let these be set aside. They, they are fundamental to the whole scripture because it is what the scripture says. And all truth encompasses these facts. All truth encompasses these facts. These facts are gospel. All right, they are gospel, they are truth. And there is no other no other gospel than this. Absolutely none. And anything else other than these fundamental truths, whether they be men's imaginations, whether they be uh, men's philosophies, whether they be your church doctrine, if it is not, if it is contrary to these facts, then it is a lie. Because these facts are true. Fact number one. Yahweh is the Elohim of Israel, period. It is not Yeshua. It is not an angel. It is not a spirit. It is Yahweh. He is the Elohim of Israel. And Yahweh is the creator of all things. Yeshua is not the creator. The spirit is not the creator. The angels are not creators. Yahweh is the creator of all things. Now, Yahweh is identified as Israel's Elohim 107 times in the scripture. 107 times. And I'm not putting all 107 in here, but I'm putting uh, a few verses in here, and you can go look them up for yourself, the rest of them. Exodus 5.1, and afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, thus says Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel, let my people go. 
that they may hold a feast for me in the wilderness. And again, in Psalms 41.13, we have Blessed be Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and Amen. And in Isaiah 44, we have, Sing, O ye heavens, for Yahweh has done it. Shout, you lower parts of heaven, break forth into singing, you mountains, O forests, and every tree therein. For Yahweh has redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. In verse 24, thus saith Yahweh your Redeemer, and he that formed you from the womb, the ands don't necessarily be there because it's really Yahweh your Redeemer, he that formed you from the womb, I am Yahweh that makes all things, that stretches forth the heavens alone, that spreads abroad the earth by myself. And then in Isaiah 45, 16, says that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west, from the east to the west, that in other words, the whole compass of the earth, that there is none beside me. I am Yahweh. There is none else. And in Isaiah 45, 21, tell and bring them near, them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who has declared this from ancient time? Who has said it from that time? Have not I Yahweh? And there is no Elohim beside me, a just Elohim and a Savior. There is none beside me. Again, one hundred and seven times this phrase is used in the scripture Yahweh the Elohim of Israel Yahweh is the Elohim of Israel that is a fundamental truth he is and if you want to put it in English terms for those English that want to stick to English, he is the God of Israel. Elohim is the God. He is the supreme Elohim. There is none else. There's no one beside him. That is a fundamental truth. If your denomination or if your doctrine teaches you anything other than this, your denomination and your doctrine is a lie. I'm not here to argue with you about it. That is just fact. You don't like it. You don't believe it. Walk into the gates of hell. Because if you don't believe this fundamental truth right here, you'll not make it into the kingdom. It hasn't been revealed to you, and if it hasn't been revealed to you, then you don't know who the Creator is. He is the one sitting on the throne. Number two, Yeshua is 
the beloved, unique, and only begotten Son of Yahweh. And Yeshua is identified as the Son of Yahweh. And in uh, Roman, Greco, Greek, you get God or Theos. But in reality, it is Yahweh. <clears throat> he is the God. He is the Theos. He's right, he is identified as the Son of Yahweh 45 times in the New Covenant Scriptures. Even the devils knew who he was. They knew he was Yahweh's son. Now why do I bring them into the picture? Because, guess what? They're from outside this world. We're fighting against... What are we fighting against here? Let's look at this. <clears throat> uh, Paul says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Adonai and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of Yahweh that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Why? For we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, put you on the whole armor of God. <clears throat> and the uh, the point of bringing, bringing them into this, these devils are not of this world. They're cast to this world. But they, they know the reality of the truth. They know the truth. And what did they say? And behold, they cried out, the devils, the demons, saying, What have we to do with you, Yeshua, the son of Yahweh? Are you come hither to torment us before the time? That's Matthew 28, 29, and Mark 3, 11. And the unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, You are the Son of Yahweh. In Mark 5, 7. And cried, this is another evil spirit, cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Yeshua, you Son of Yahweh, the Most Hi, Elohim. I adjure you by Elohim that you torment me not. <clears throat> These <clears throat> devils knew knew who Yeshua was. They knew he came from Yahweh. They knew he was his earthly begotten son. They knew it. They testified to it right here. And actually, what did Yeshua say to them? Shut up, right? He didn't say, hey, you're wrong. And then it was revealed to Peter. In Matthew 16, 15, he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living Elohim. And now Simon Peter didn't address, I suppose you could say, the Son of the living uh, Yahweh. But, in this case, it was Elohim is the proper translation here, I would. Um, and in Matthew, then, what did Yeshua say to him? He answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for blood, flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Has... Yahweh, the Elohim, 
and the Father of the Messiah, Yeshua, revealed unto you his Son? You gotta really ask yourself, has he? Because if you go into your little uh, cliques and your little denominations and you sit down and go, but he's God then he has not been revealed to you. The devil has given you an idol. And there's nothing to argue about. I mean, this is just the fact. This is the truth. The devil has given you an idol, and you have accepted the idol. Because the true fact is, is that Yeshua is the son of Yahweh. He is not Yahweh. He is not the Father. He is not God. He is the Son of the living Elohim. And Yeshua himself testified of it. In John 10.36, and he's talking to the Pharisees, Say you of me, or of him, he's talking about himself, whom the Father, he's talking about Yahweh, has sanctified and sent into the world. You blaspheme because I said I am the Son of Yahweh. Do you profess to follow Yeshua? Do you profess to believe Yeshua? Yeshua never once said that he was Elohim. He never once said he was Yahweh. He never once said he was the Father. Never once. So why do you add those titles to him? Why do you say, well, he's the Son of God, but he's fully God, fully man. What? Why? Where? The point of it is, the point I'm making here is that this is a fundamental truth of the whole scripture from the beginning to the end. That the Messiah was coming and the Messiah was Yeshua and he was to be the son of Yahweh. He was going to redeem us. That is what it was. God did not die on the cross for us. God did not shed his blood. If, in a sense, you could say that Yahweh shed his blood for us in this sense. Okay, here's the sense you could say it in. Just as in the families, you talk about well, he's my blood. So a father begets a son and he considers his, his son his blood. And so the father would send the son to war and the son died in the war. And the father could say, I shed my blood in the war. I sent my son. I gave my blood to the war. In that sense, you could say Yahweh gave his blood in the fact that he gave his son Yeshua as a redeeming sacrifice for us. But, <clears throat> but Yahweh did not die on that cross. Yahweh did not shed his blood. He's not made of flesh and blood. He's spirit. He is light. He is not flesh and blood. He can't be flesh and blood. So this is this this fundamental number fundamental truth is that Yeshua is the beloved only begotten son of Yahweh. Period. And that's what he is. Fundamental truth number three, and if you don't believe this, they are marching into the lake of fire, folks. Period. End of story. Yeshua was given all power and authority on earth and in heaven to judge and to rule. 
Now, if Yeshua was your God that you say he is, why does he have to be given all the power? Why does he have to be given authority? Wouldn't he already have it? The very fact, the very fact that Yahweh, the Father, the Elohim of Yeshua, gave it to Yeshua is enough evidence in and of itself to know that Yeshua never was a God. He never was. You could say maybe say he was an Elohim because the angels are Elohims, the seraphims are Elohims, the anything that's up there in that realm that's not with us is considered an Elohim. So one and one can liken this unto Joseph in Egypt. Go read it. Uh, it's an allegory for us. He had complete power and authority to rule over Egypt. But that power was only given to him by Pharaoh. Did not have it of himself, and it could be stripped of him at any time. Because Pharaoh, the god of Egypt, gave it to him the same way with Yeshua. Yahweh, the almighty, only living Elohim, the, the one and only sitting on the throne, gave it to Yeshua. And if he wanted to, he could take it back. But he's, he's a righteous creator. He's a righteous. He's good. He lives up to his word. He's not going to. But he gave it to Yeshua. That is a fundamental fact. And again, it is a fact. It is the truth, and there is no other truth than this. And everything, everything, everything else is a lie. And so you need to understand this. Because if you don't, if you are on the fence, and if you don't understand these very basic fundamental truths throughout the whole word of Yahweh, then you will never be able to understand what is written. That's just all there is to it. You will never be able to understand what is written. In fact, <clears throat> the whole Old Testament uh, scriptures um, was a mystery. Even to the apostles, it was a mystery. And it was not even known until after the resurrection. And actually, until Pentecost, when the Spirit, which revealed all things, was given to men. They e did not even understand yet when, until Pentecost came, is when they finally got the understanding of who Yeshua really was. Oh, they knew that he was the Son of God, but they didn't have the understanding. They didn't get it yet. But now that we have the Spirit, and this is the thing, we have so much more here on this side in this new covenant that was given into, in walking in this spiritual uh, life that we can walk in. <clears throat> and that is how we know all of this truth today. If we had been 2,500 years ago, we wouldn't know any of this stuff. We wouldn't get it. Because Yeshua was hidden until he appeared when born of a woman. And even then, he was even hidden. Even after his resurrection, he was still hidden. So all power and all authority to rule and reign is given to him and all judgment. John 5.21, For as the Father raises up the dead and makes them alive, even so the Son makes alive whom he will. For the Father judges no man, but has given all judgment unto the Son, that all should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. And he that honors not the Son honors not the Father which has sent him. And when you call 
the son, El, the Elohim, you do not honor either one of them. You bear false witness against them both. You bring shame to the whole uh, Christian realm, the whole gospel. You bring it to naught. Because it was given unto the Son. Then in Matthew 28, 16, 17. And here's what I'm talking about. They still didn't understand. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Yeshua had appointed them and when they saw him they worshipped him and this worship see we, another thing you got the worship thing all wrong too that means to crouch down to express homage to false fall prostrate to kneel before it's like you it's like bowing before a king but but worship the English word for worship is just totally got everybody messed up um, because uh, when you're singing praises to Yahweh, to the Creator, and thanking Him for His salvation and what have you, uh, <clears throat> you're worshiping Him. Uh, you, you praise Yeshua, you thank Yeshua, you, but you don't pray to Yeshua. Yeshua actually told us to pray to who? Yahweh. Pray to the Father. Pray to the Elohim. In his name you do it. That's how you come. But they were on the mountain. In 6 and 17. <clears throat> and you notice here, some doubted. They still didn't understand. They still didn't believe. And Yeshua, Yeshua came and spake to them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Hey, it was given unto him. And then he says, Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in my name. And I corrected this because the rest of this verse does not align with any scriptures whatsoever. And when you go to Mark and see what he says, this is what he says, teaching and baptizing in my name. So, but this is an, another video in, uh, again, like I say, the the Trinitarian uh, translators corrupted certain places in the Bible to bring it through. <clears throat> then Matthew 28, 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always even unto the end of the world. Amen. And so this Yeshua, our Messiah, the Lamb of God, the Lamb of Yahweh who came here that we are to follow, who is the Word, which we're going to get into in 1 Peter 2.21. It says, for to this you were called. This is Peter saying, he's saying, hey, to this you're called. This is what you've been called to. Since the Messiah also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in his steps. Who did not sin. Now, if you're following in his steps, first thing you do, you do not sin. You stop the sin. Neither will there be any guile in his mouth, so there can't be any guile in your mouth. When he was reviled, he reviled not again. So when you are reviled, you don't revile again. When he suffered, he threatened not. And so when we suffer, we're not to threaten. But committed himself to who? Yahweh that judges righteously. Now, what are we to do? We are to commit ourselves to Yahweh that judges righteously. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead 
to sins. Now, if we're being dead to sins, we should live unto righteousness. Another obeying uh, the commandments, keeping the commandments. For by whose stripes you are healed. I could get into a real long one on this. I'll be real short on this, but the, many of the mega churches, the big teaching is, well, we our bodies are healed, our bank accounts are healed, or we have prosperity and everything else because by His stripes we are healed. What's healed by your, His stripes is your sin-stricken heart. It is was damaged. It was polluted. It was sick and ruled by sin and by his stripes he healed our heart <clears throat> it has nothing to do with your fleshly healing for you were sheep gone astray but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop Yahweh of your souls now, who are we returning to Yahweh our creator the shepherd and bishop of our souls, of our of our beings, is not Yeshua. It is Yahweh. Did we go astray from Yeshua? No. We went astray from our Creator. He is the one we transgressed against. But it is through Yeshua that we are redeemed back to the shepherd and overseer of our beings. Fundamental fact number four and this is just fact. Again, if you add anything to this then you have perverted the word. You do not believe you, have, you are destined to walk right through the gates into the fire. Because this is a fundamental fact that Yahweh, the one living Elohim, in the past spoke to our forefathers by the prophets in various and different ways. It was the very act of Yahweh, not Yeshua, that the messages came to the men of old. It was by Yahweh's voice, or an angel, a voice in a fire, image of a man. You can find this throughout the scriptures. But we have the spirit of truth that testifies to us now in Hebrews 1, 1 and 2 long ago and at many different times and in many different ways Yahweh spoke to our fathers by the prophets but in these last days he has spoken to us by his son whom he appointed the heir of all things through whom also he created the world and this through how he created the world through Yeshua, how that was accomplished. whole different subject for another time. But you notice it says through whom he created the world. Who created the world? Yahweh. He is our creator. Remember, he is our creator. And he spoke to us by his son in these days. In Exodus 23, 20, Behold, I send an angel, Moloch, before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. What do you say about this? I'm just using this as an example of how he spoke. And 23:21, Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if you shall indeed obey his voice and do all 
that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to thine adversaries. The messengers, the angels, the ones you see in the Old Testament coming in different ways, you will see where uh, Yahweh is speaking and the angel is speaking the words of Yahweh to someone and then the angel goes away and Yahweh is still speaking. So he speaks in a voice. He speaks through the angels. He speaks through the fires. He can make and speak and do anything he wants. Remember, he is the keeper of the creation. He is, it, it exists by him, so he can manipulate and he can do whatever he wants to do. He can speak any way he wants to speak. And in times past, he spoke only through the angels and various manners and the prophets <clears throat> to us, but we were spoken unto by his son, by Yeshua, by Yeshua the Messiah, the Lamb of Yahweh, slain from the foundation of the earth. Now these are fundamental facts. And they are not theology or men's thoughts. They are not even my thoughts. This is what the Word says. I have shown you what the Word says. Now you may find something that, oh, it's a little contrary. Well, what does it mean? It's got to all come back to this. If it seems contrary to this, then that is wrong. It's your interpretation of what you're looking at that is wrong because your interpretation of everything in Scripture has to align with what has been shown here. Because otherwise, then it is all contradictory. It is all confusing. And it is men's thoughts and thinking and unbelief in these fundamental facts that air comes into the mind and one can frustrate themselves to death and it will be to death saying it cannot be so it must be different I believe this that can't say that because it's contrary to what I believe sorry then what you believe is a lie and if that's to do then they just deceive themselves. You just deceive yourself if you uh, do not understand these very basic fundamental truths from the scripture. Yahweh is the Elohim of Israel. Yahweh is the creator of all things. Yeshua is the beloved, unique, and only begotten Son of Yahweh. Yeshua was given all power and authority in earth and in heaven to judge and to rule. And it was by Yahweh, by His Son, I'm sorry, by Yeshua, by Yahweh's Son, His Son Yeshua, that he has spoken unto us in these last days and he speaks through him through the Spirit to us and <clears throat> that is those are the fundamental facts and I'm going to end this part one here and we will have uh, part two will be coming to grips keeps the file a little bit smaller so anyway I pray that Yahweh will bless his words and bless the hearts that hear this. And part two will um, finish this lesson on Yahweh on Mount Sinai. So, 
look for part two. Thank you for listening.